Greetings, Grandfather. <clears throat> now, many of you have probably pondered what all this stuff is about in terms of teaching you how to move hurricanes, for example. And I know that it will take much practice to uh, accomplish that, okay? But here's the issue. I know that this work is very advanced. However, some of you are just about there that you can accomplish it. And others will be needed. This is not uh, a recruitment here. <laughs> I'm simply trying to help you to understand something that is an issue for Earth. For a long time now, the population of Earth has been very gradually waking up to your full potential, meaning that which you can do as spirit personalities, meaning the everlasting you, the eternal you, and that which you can do as yourself, your day-to-day -day physical self. Some of this has taken place in your dreams, others in your inspirations, and uh, for still others through trainings such as these. <clears throat> now, in the coming years, Scientists have, I believe, correctly suggested that it might just be that asteroids, comets, and bits and pieces of those could uh, come close to Earth or worse. And present technology that exists as well as technology that will exist for the next 20 or 30 years, all right, it's not going to be able to do much about that. So this moving the hurricanes thing, even though it is viable, the way I'm teaching it here, granted, not in the most advanced methods, but in the methods that are safe to put out just like this on the internet, so that you are not likely to be able to get in any trouble nor cause any for others, most likely accidentally. Well, it's also a step along the way to learning how to move things gently, not suddenly, to move things that are likely some day in some future generation of peoples here on Earth going to come and threaten the Earth. I'm not talking about people from other planets. They'll come to help you, but even they will not always have the means to move something that could be coming at great speed and will require motion to change its trajectory. What do I mean by motion? Not unlike the steps you've been taking with your extending and bilocation and pulling that you're doing to learn how to move hurricanes. So you will learn, those of you who are doing that now, to uh, move asteroids or comets that may actually threaten the Earth. Don't move anything that doesn't threaten the Earth, okay? But if something is coming, then you'll need to do something. So these videos, which will hopefully be available indefinitely here on YouTube, even if I am no longer available, will help you to learn how to do these things. All right, next step, past the last step that we did about moving hurricanes. 
Now, you remember what I said about bilocation. Once you've learned how to do that, it doesn't make any difference if you're bilocating 30 feet from where you're presently standing or sitting, or 300 feet or the other side of the earth, or on the moon for that matter. Once you've learned how to do it in the way of taught, you can bilocate anywhere, just as long as you don't go out of your body. Because if you go out of your body, you won't know if you're bilocating. Okay? It's that simple. That's in the previous videos, and you can consult with them if you wish. Now, this time I want you to try something else. And it's also training. I want you to uh, bilocate so that you are standing on the moon. All right. Use the same techniques I gave you before. I'm not going to reiterate. It's going to be your job to watch the videos and uh, go to the written blogs where I've also requested that Robbie, this is not Robbie speaking, this is grandfather, Robbie put up the videos in some places and put up links to things that Robbie has taught on the blogs as a shaman and mystical man about these things that have already been written. But this time I want you to bilocate on the moon, okay? So just follow your procedures and do that. After you get a feeling for that, and you will get a genuine feeling. Some of you, the moon, for some of you, eh? The moon will feel kind of dusty. For others, they'll feel like a sense of crunchiness underneath your feet. For still others, you'll have other feelings. Practice, practice, practice. Then, I'd like you to take it a step further. I'd like you to pick any other planet going out from Earth, meaning not towards uh, uh, Mercury or Venus, okay? But uh, heading out, Neptune, Jupiter, Pluto, whatever you want, and bilocate there. All right. These are all exercises. When you are bilocated on one or more of those places, but just one at a time, all right. Then again, I want you to practice pulling on something that is an immovable object, meaning no matter how much you pull, it's not going to move at all. But this is just homework, you understand? So again, pull slightly, not too strong, on the sun. Don't worry, you're not going to move the sun. <laughs> but it's just homework, because at some point, Either you, as you get older, and I am no longer around to help you, or maybe your students, as you get better at this, and teach people yourself, if that is what will take place, will not only have the opportunity to move a comet or an asteroid that's going to come too close to the Earth and possibly even hit it, which we would not want to happen, all right? Then your job will be to move it towards the sun in the most benevolent way so that it does not strike any of the planets going towards the sun from Earth, all right? You ought to be able to get plenty of warning that something like that is headed towards Earth and is either going to come way too close to Earth. I don't mean just, quote, nearby, as uh, astronomers might say, but I mean something that genuinely represents a threat, and astronomers will be able to warn you if it does represent a threat, or they will talk about it on their sites. NASA will also have things like this and other European uh, agencies and uh, 
Asian agencies that you can read about. There'll be warning. So you'll be able to pick, and especially those of you who know, how to understand your own body's feelings. What is safe, what isn't safe, all that teaching has been done here and on the written blogs. You'll be able to know which ones are truly dangerous. So don't be pulling this this way and that that way without cause. Keep in mind that if you move something that is just traveling through space, minding its own business, so to speak, and does not represent any threat to Earth, it could cause harm to others. That's why I've built in safety mechanisms into what I'm teaching you here. But there is enough for you to practice this now. Some day it will be necessary for you or one of your students or even one of your students' students, if it's that far in the future, that it will be necessary to move some object that may just intersect with the earth. So, I'm not calling this advanced work for nothing. It can be done to move such a thing using the same general method you used to practice to move hurricanes when they threaten people. All right? Don't move them around in the ocean just to play. It's not a game. Remember, there are always, okay, consequences. This is not a threat. I'm just saying that if you mess around too much with Mother Nature, consequences could occur. Not because I'm saying so, but because nature, meaning Mother Earth, welcomes you to learning how to do these things which you can do as spirit in your worlds when you are spirit. And she also welcomes you to learn how to apply these things here on earth when you are form, meaning physical. And that is why she has these things. And that is why you find yourself on a planet that has these things that are threatening the human world. So, you are here to learn what Mother Earth can do, you are here to remember what you can do, and you are ultimately here to learn how to become a person who can help others even when it does not seem possible to help. Good life.